Good day everyone, this is Maggie B for Apps for iPads and today I'm going to bring you an app that I use all the time and I just now realize that I've never introduced you for. And that is called Instapaper. I know we've even talked about it when we've talked about other um, iPad apps that have this incorporated into it, but we've never actually taken a look. And they have just today released a new version that gives us some new tools, and we will get to those in just a minute, especially the dictionary, just don't let me forget about that. And I'm just gonna walk you through this. What this does is it saves articles for you when you're working in other applications on your iPad. Although it's a universal, app. You can use it on an iPhone and iPod Touch. You can also use it on your PC. So it's, uh, it's a service that is in the clouds. So once you set up the account, it is saving these articles in the cloud so you can actually access them from any of your devices or computers. So that's a great thing that it can do. It also is caching the articles that it's saving for you so that you can read them offline. So if you happen to have an iPad that is only Wi-Fi and you're in the car, you do not need to be online to be able to access um, all the Instapaper articles that you have set aside to read later. So as we come into the main body of Instapaper, let me just quickly show you through some of the things that are on here. And But please, please be sure to stop by the website because invariably as I'm going through the here, I may neglect to, to point out one or two things and we usually do catch them and publish those in the full review on the website. In the top left hand corner, you're gonna see a plus sign. That allows you to make folders for better organizing all of the articles that you keep within Instapaper. Although it really was intended for saving an article, getting to them, and then disposing of them. Whether you're disposing them um, through um, you know, just deleting them, or if you're sending them to your Evernote account, whatever you're, you're planning to do with them, emailing them to people, sharing them through social networks, however you're going to do that. Although the iPad app will actually hold up to 500 articles. So that's a lot of articles. So if you're going to use it to hold some of your articles, then you're going to want to set up some folders. I usually just go through them and dispose of them. Anything I'm going to keep, I usually put them into uh, my Evernote account. So when you're in read, read Later, you see you have all the articles that you have put in here to, um, to read later. Now, where do those articles come from? There are actually 135 iPad apps that will allow you to keep things in um, and, and move them over to your Instapaper app. And the ones that I use it with the absolute most are my RSS reader, which is Mr. Reader, and my mobile Safari. So I will show you those two in a second, exactly how I do that with those. Um, you have a liked category, so you can put 20 of your most recently liked articles can be saved in this folder, and then you have your archive, and it holds 10 of your deleted ones at any one time, so if you put something in there, it's not immediately gone, so you can retrieve it. You can also retrieve it from your PC or wherever else you'd like. Now, we do have some settings. You can set it into dark mode, so if you're reading in the car at night, you can do that. You can you can turn rotation on and off. You have, uh, you can set your uh, scroll mode. You do ha you can share accounts. You can share um, any of your articles on your Facebook account, your Twitter account, um, Tumblr, Pinboard, Evernote. You can set if you're visible or not invisible to your friends. That comes into play. I'll show you. There's some icons where you can actually, you can set up people that you know through Twitter, Facebook, and your your contacts through your email and you can share items through um, just like you would over Facebook you can do it through Instapaper. So I have not actually set up Facebook because right now it just logs you in to your high account, your, your personal profile account and most of the things that I tend to use Instapaper for are for the apps for iPads website 
and the people that I would want to share those with are on the Apps for iPads Facebook account and that's um, you know a, a fan page and right now they do not have a way that I can get that logged in because it's a secondary account under obviously my primary one but I do have the Twitter account set up and once in a while I do just um, share some things with our Twitter um, followers so if we go back out here you can also add our articles. You can install Read Later in Safari, and I'm going to show you if you if you follow this, it will install a bookmarklet on your bookmark bar on your mobile Safari. I'm not going to do it now, but all you need to do is um, follow step by step what it tells you to do, and it will make you um, a bookmark so that you can easily save things in Safari right to Instapaper. You can send uh, read later by email. I, this is my account. And there's all sorts of things as you can see. It right down to ask yes or no before archiving. So there's lots of things you can do as far as settings. Edit is basically if you want to um, delete something. Okay, so if we go into here, you're going to see that it strips down the article. It did take the video out, so if I want to, I can tell it to open in the browser. If I do have a Wi-Fi connection, then I can see the video. Um, if I want to share this, I can open it in Safari, I can email it, I can email full text, I can copy just the link, I can copy the full text, I can post it to Twitter, I can read it in, uh, uh, because I have these apps on my iPad, I can read it in Goodreader open it in iCab Mobile or in Atomic Web um, Browser. It will detect anything that you have on your iPad and allow you to access those. So um, you can see it's all stripped down. It makes it very easy to see exactly what all the content is and you can adjust the text, you can adjust the fonts um, for, for size, for darkness. It's really, it has an awful lot that you can do with it. I did mention that it has um, a new dictionary put in. So if we see something in here um, that we don't, if we hit, you can, when you, when you define a word, you can copy, you can share it, believe it or not. You can share if you've, if you, if you've highlighted what you want to share just that certain part, say for Twitter, you only want a little bit of it. You can do it that way. But if I do it this way, and I say define, it gives me the definition of the word that I have um, designated in, in the blue highlight. So that's really nice. If you're reading an article and you're not quite sure what the definition of a word is, how they're using it, you can do that. You can al always define it as a favorite. You can send it to trash. What I'm going to do now is real quick, I'm going to show you those um, applications on my iPad that I use this in all the time. One is Mr. Reader. It's going to sync up real fast here for you. Okay. And we can go to anything here. Okay. When it comes up like this, um, it's like, well, this looks like it would really be interesting, but I don't have time to read it right now. I'm in Mr. Reader. I just tap the forward button. I come down here to Instapaper. I tap on it. And once I have it set up with my username and password, I actually left it open right now so you can see what happens the very first time. You just fill it in and hit next, and it automatically will save those for you. The other thing that I use it in all the time is Safari on my iPad. And you will see that I have the bookmarklet saved right up here in the bookmark bar. Now the bookmark bar is not something that's automatically set up in your Safari. All you need to do is to go into the gear setting icon and go under Safari and tell it you, you want to have the bookmark bar. And it will do that for you. Now if I tap on Whoops. If I tap on Instapaper, read later. If you watch, you're going to see it says it's saving that quickly. It has saved it 
And if we go back to Instapaper, you'll see it's right here. So it's, it's a really handy tool. It's something you use all the time. It really makes um, really good use of your, your time so you're not um, squandering it. And I really highly recommend Instapaper. Like I said, if you get used to using it, you'll end up using it all the time. So stop by the website for our full review where we'll tell you all the ins and outs of it. This is Maggie B for Apps for iPads. See you on that website and sync with you soon.